Welcome to our porch snowman sign. Um, this is a really cool little trend that we've got going on um, in the world today is that we do these long planks. This one's four feet tall and you can get them at the DIY center so you can't ship these things in the mail or whatever. Um, but then you make a, a greeting sign for your porch that you just lean up there or this would be fabulous by your Christmas tree or your fireplace. And then I've embellished it with, of course, snowflakes. And then we've given it a hat brim. And then the neat thing about this is you could untie your scarf and you can use the other side and put another hat brim on the other side and make it into a fall scarecrow. So um, super useful to like extend your season for um, your surfaces. And then they store nicely, just stand them in the, like the edge of your closet or whatever. And they're just long and vertical and they just put away really nice. So I hope you enjoy the project. Um, it's kind of an interesting one. A little bit awkward on the filming angles, but um, everything's in there. Enjoy. All right, as I'm getting ready to paint my tall porch sign, this is a four foot tall board, and I can't show it all to you at once, and I won't be doing that when I'm filming. I'll just do the detail areas. Um, we've got a piece of wood that we've cut that will go a little bit at an angle, and that's going to be the brim of a hat. You can flip this board over and paint on the other side, and so this is going to be a snowman, and then the other side could be like a scarecrow. So it can be a double-sided, and then you can, the neat thing about these is they store like in your closet in a corner um, very easily, so you can change them out for the seasons without a whole bunch of storage problems. Um, you can go to, this is a piece of poplar, um, because it's going to stay a little bit flatter, but you can use pine, is perfectly fine as well, and they're meant to be rustic, so that's fine too. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll on a couple coats of my white color, which will be specified in the packet. Um, and I'm going to get that started. And that's just going to take, that's a little bit of fussy stuff. But I did want you to see, and you can go to the, um, sorry, you can go to the um, do DIY stores and you can ask them to cut your board for you to the size. So if you don't have a handyman around your house or whatever, or a saw, um, they'll cut it for you. So it's super easy to get a hold of, um, really easy surface to, to get started with. All right, we're gonna take one of these duster stiplers and deco our Americana gray sky, and we're going to pounce it off on our palette so that there's not a lot of paint. And we wanna make kind of an all over snow texture. And so we'll just fill that up with the snow texture and then we're gonna repeat it with white, just so that it doesn't look just like flat gray. It'll look a little bit more like snowy. Okay, so here's what it looks like when we get the first coat on. Oops, my thing to slide here. Okay, so we're doing white now, and then my pressure is just light. And then instead of going like in a row in a row, I'm making sure that I'm being very random, and I'm looking for just like even coverage. And I'm doing lighter pressure with my white than I did with my gray because I don't want it to be too um, over blended and mushy looking. And then when you get done, you'll look for places that look uneven and you'll just kind of stipple to make evenness happen. Okay, and then like this is standing out to me, but then I'll let it dry and I'll see what it looks like once it's dry. All right, where we've got the face and things like that, we're gonna use the um, Cobalt Teal Hue, which is the DecoArt Media Acrylics. These are super pigmented colors and they're amazing. I'm going to use a dome stencil brush and I'm going to wipe off all of my extra paint on the paper towel because I just want this to be a hint. So what we're going to do is everywhere where we want to cast a shadow, we're going to rub, and I think I rubbed off just a little bit too much. So we're going to round his face just a little bit, not quite so much rubbing here. And then over here where this is where his face ends and his scarf will be under there. So we want to rub that. We'll bring that around like a little smile. Give him a little bit of roundness since we don't really have a shaped wood. And that'll start forming him. And there'll be deeper shadows in the corners and less where there's just like this kind of area right here. You reload your paint as you need it. We're going to do a little bit more of this at the end. I want to see what the um, what this big old thing looks like um, 
with a face on it before I get too crazy. Okay, I think that's good right there. And then we'll get some going out where his shoulders will be. This, um, this shading and highlight, um, the shading and detail right here is gonna be what makes um, it possible for the, snow, the snowflakes that we're gonna put on later to show up. So make sure that you get it deep enough so that when you put a white snowflake on top of it, that it actually shows. All right. Okay, so then we're going to repeat with Wild Orchid, which is an Americana color. And so we'll put that in the corners. And maybe we won't pull it out quite so far. Get that going over here in the corners. It just starts kind of being a little bit magical. You can bring it out lighter, so don't push as hard to bring it in a little bit more. And that's just gonna tint him and give him just a little bit, not, hey, I'm a white board running around here. But I don't want him to be a purple snowman either. Then we're gonna go dirty brush into our uniform blue. And then that's what's gonna really sink that corner in. And we don't bring that out as much. Just that little bit. It craze up the shadows just a little bit. when you're looking um, at it just kind of squint just a little bit and that helps you see whether or not you need to add a little bit more. I think we'll go into our teal. Bring that down into his face just a little bit more. I think the teal makes him feel colder. Gives a kind of a cool look. Okay. Now I'm gonna flip the port over and I'm gonna do a big old flip here. Nothing like making it difficult, right? And down here at the end, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna build that up. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more paint out. Let's see, we're gonna have his hat go that way. I think we'll go weightier over here on the, if I'm looking at it, it's on the left-hand side. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and just start growing out a big rounded shadow like maybe eight inches into it or something like that. Cut that corner really deep. Okay, and then over here, we're gonna have just a less of a shadow. Cut that corner and maybe it'll just be just a little bit just to say, hi, yeah, I'm here. Okay, and I don't want to even. Okay, and then we're gonna go up the sides. And I think we're gonna to have to bring it up. I think our big snowflake is supposed to go down here at the bottom. So let's take a look at that. Where are you? Giant snowflake. 
So big giant snowflake. So we want to make sure that this giant snowflake is going to show. Um, so what we need to do is we need to bring this up and round it up into here. So we'll go and bring that up. I'm using really light pressure. I'm not trying to like kill the board or anything like that. So it's not super hard to do. Draw that up. side. Okay, and then yeah, so that kind of floats and mists out of out of that snowflake just a little bit. We'll bring some down this side. We'll increase up there at the top where his scarf is gonna be. show underneath the scarf. All right, so that's the teal. Now I'll switch brushes and I'll go into the wild orchid. And I've got the blue in my brush, so I'm going to neutralize it by wiping it out a couple times with the wild orchid. And then I should be wild orchid. There we go. So what we're going to do there is we're going to deepen these corners. And kind of not everywhere. We don't want it to just be like, hey, hi, I'm purple. And I think it'd be pretty if some of the teal and some of the purple show through. So I don't want to obliterate my teal. But this is how we're going to get a deeply, darkly corner. That's by putting these two colors on it. All right, and we'll deepen that up top. just a little bit. I like those two colors. Okay, and then we'll go into our uniform blue, and then that's how we're going to get that really good anchor down there. So if you've got this white thing with a big black top on it, um, because he's going to have a black hat, um, then what's got to happen is down at the bottom, you've got to have some weight um, because otherwise it'll feel like it's going to fall over because you've got a big black thing weighing it down. So what we're going to do is use this blue to weight us a little bit down here. I might have to bring in some more of that teal. So we'll do it on both sides. Not the deal, the um, wild orchid. Okay, so then we got our white snowflake down there at the bottom. And then see that transition is not very nice. It goes like, hi, I'm uniform blue, but I don't have any orchid. So I'll go ahead and anchor a little bit more. Bring it up just a little bit more. Sides. Okay. 
Okay, now we'll go get a new brush. And with our new brush, we will put more of the orchid in. Above it. Okay, then we'll test our snowflake. And ta-da, we can see all the colors. That's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna stop this right now because I think that it's enough to get started with, and then we can go back at the end and we can um, adjust everything. All right, we're gonna paint our snowflakes. This is a giant snowflake. I'm gonna use a great big giant mushroom sponge. And what I'm gonna do is just pat it straight down. And I don't wanna to have to worry about getting into all these grooves, but I don't want them messy either. So I'll just stipple them with this giant sponge. And I love that it has like a nice hand hold on it. And then it has not a lot of mess and it goes pretty darn fast. And when you stipple, it tends to base coat better than if you're brushing because it brushes part of the paint off at the same time. So I'll do a couple of coats on here and then we'll get them glittered. Okay, we're gonna put the details on. I've got my base coats on. We're gonna put the details on, but before I do that, the stippling can make a little bit of a rough texture. I'm just gonna give him a little bit of a sand just like rub it right off and it will just knock that, that texture off. You don't even need to do it very much. It just like something gets raised and it just helps them away. So I think we'll start with his eyes. Um, jo Sonia once said, um, she's a, uh, another designer. <clears throat> she said that if you finish your eyes before you do anything else, that you'll be more inclined to finish the project because the poor thing will be looking back at you. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna finish that first. And, um, and that way he'll have a little soul as well. All right, we're gonna do his cheeks before we do his eyes so that we don't run through them later and ruin them and have to redo them. We're gonna use Georgia clay. And we wanna really take that off because we want it to be really super soft. Look out over here. Just give him a little blush. So we want to try and get them over around the same vicinity, kind of over that last smile marker. And anything that I get in his eye or whatever, I'll just rebase coat. For our eyes, we're going to use a big fat round brush because this is a really big piece. We're going to dry brush, sorry for my squeaky chair, and I'm going to have a very difficult time getting a good angle on this, so we're just going to bear with me. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to dry brush our highlights. So I flicked off on my paper towel, and dry brushing means that it looks kind of dry and scratchy. You want to do shape following strokes, so you curve where it curves. And I'll reload my brush flat, flick, flick, flick on my paper towel, and repeat on the other side. Okay, and then this seems a little bit too strong to me, so I'm going to just repeat it with a very worn out load of paint. And then I'll repeat on this one because now that one took over that one. Just even it out just a little bit. And then we'll go into, um, I'm gonna try Thalo Blue in the um, Media Fluid Acrylics. And we're going to shade his eyes. side and I always say float where you can see yourself floating 
So I'm doing it opposite just so that I can get a good camera angle here. Pardon my hair. And then we'll repeat on the other side. And I want to walk that out just a little bit further. All right, we're going to make him have vision here. So we're going to give him some nice, big, ploppy whites of his eyes. And then what we'll do is we'll go over to the other side and we'll give him a little bit of a highlight as well. And we'll give him little stars in his eyes. All right, I'm going to show you a couple of eyelashes, but I'm going to have to finish it in my lap because there's no way to get the good angle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line the eyes. So I'm bring that along. And then just get them their line. That just kinda of sometimes helps finish it. It's just like eyeliner on your eye. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out. I'm gonna come off the line and I'm gonna do heavy eyelash strokes and tapering off and I can go in and I can make them more bushy or whatever as well. And then um, I'll bring them out from eh, maybe about the middle part and go down. Okay, we're going to go with saffron on his nose. And his nose is kind of in sections, so we're going to saffron it in little chunks instead of just all down the middle of it. section. Okay, then we're going to dip into white plus saffron. And we'll do it one more time not covering up as much. Cute, cute, cute. All right, then we'll go into Antique Maroon and we'll float. It's all fixed up. So we'll float along. Whoopsie. Hi. We'll go to that mark. I'm not liking this color. Okay, let's take that color away. I think I'm going to go into something like maybe Georgia Clay. I'll see. Okay, remember what I was saying. If you want to put um, if you want something to base coat a little bit better, then you tap it instead of base coating it. So what we're going to do with the red is we're going to use our jumble, jumber, <laughs> jumber, jumbo daubers, and we're going to tap the paint on, and it's going to cover way better over that black. Red is a hard color to base coat. So I'll go up the middle first so that I don't end up with a lot of paint. And then I'll go to each side so I don't have bleeding under my tape. And get that based. Okay, we've got Quinn Gold, which is one of the media acrylic paints. And we're going to go ahead and try that color. That's much better. Because these are so sheer, they let all the other colors show through. And that makes them um, very friendly to use with colors. This down. See how I left a little bit of a flat mark there? I'll just tease that out or grab a mop. And then we'll shade right down the back sides of where the crinkles in his nose are. And then I'll give that even just a little bit more. I don't think I did a very good job of floating. I don't want any stop and start marks. Go in. You can 
continue along on the tip. All right, we're gonna take our same graphite and we're gonna shade underneath the, um, let's see if I can get a good angle at this, underneath these coal bits. And we're gonna do like a C stroke. I'm gonna need a little more paint than that. Right underneath. We need that mop to blunt off the edges. Okay, that's what's gonna make this look as if um, it is sunk in the snow. repeat on the rest of them. Okay, then we'll go next to the shading area and we'll float with lamp black. Change that base coat from um, lamp black to charcoal so that I could float on it with, um, with the lamp black. And then we'll shade on the opposite side with slate gray. All right, so we've got, I'm gonna use my um, crescent brush and I'm going to highlight a little bit more with um, slate gray and draw it out a little bit more. Make sure you dry it off really good. It's a dark color and a light color. Draw that in. And that starts getting just a little bit more 3D looking. And I'm kind of thinking I might need to go a little bit darker on my shading underneath. It doesn't quite shazowy me. And I think it should. So I'll go just a little bit more underneath and that will give it just a little bit more depth. I think that's better. They look like they're kind of on top now. Okay, and if I can get the hair out of my eyeball, we'll go ahead and put a dry brushed highlight in from the edge. Don't do it right on the edge. With white. Drying it off. A little bit more. There, I think that those look pretty good. Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of this, oh, which gray, graphite, under. Sometimes this brush, um, it's a black silver brush um, from Dynasty, and I'm not knocking this, but this brush has got such a stiff bristle that it's actually removing my paint off as I'm putting it on because it's like just digging it off. So I think I'm gonna need to switch to a little bit more soft brush so that I can get my, my painting on. Sometimes your brushes just kind of defeat you. I'm finding if I lean it off to the edge that it will cooperate. Oops, get out of there. And it will cause that nose to kind of sit down in its face just a little bit. Like that's dug in there and I think we might need to do his eyes as well. I loaded my brush wrong. 
Okay, so we'll get, we'll go ahead and let's shade down the lash line. Let's see what that does for me. Okay, it deepens the lashes. I think that sets them in just a little bit. Okay, we're going to repeat our highlights on the nose with a little bit of white, plus just to give them just a little bit more of a crunchier looking nosy. Okay, I can dig it. All right, we're gonna take a big a dome brush and we're gonna start with graphite and we're gonna highlight. It's not gonna show very much. I'm gonna do graphite plus a little bit of, of slate gray. And we're just gonna highlight in the middle of the areas on his hat. And give it just a little roundness. Make sure that you really dry it off on your paper towel. So yeah, I don't know if you can even see that. And then I'll dirty brush load a little bit more of the slate gray. And then I'll highlight right in the middle of that. Okay, and that just gives it a little bit more shizawi. And I think I can just a little bit more. Okay. And then on his hat, we'll ignore this area. On his hat, we'll just kind of give him some, dry that off. Oh, I didn't do the uh, mix of the gray first. So see what happens. It just gets really light too fast. You have to start a little bit toned down. It's kind of round scumbles. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to rescue this. Let's see, so I'll just even it out. Let's give him a little bit of a, a lumpy kind of a hat. Okay. Okay, we're gonna highlight the red on the um, the hearts in the hat, for the hat band, with a new color called Bright Salmon. Let's see how this looks. Highlighting red is always a struggle. So I'm just drying it off on here and then I'm scrubbing it onto here. Okay, and we'll just add just a little highlight up the middle. And you can go back into it with a little bit stronger once you get a base. Okay, and that just gives it that little bit of a puff look. Okay. Okay, on the red on the hat, same thing. You're just gonna go ahead and highlight the center. And when you get dust and stuff like that, just blow it off. Okay, and then we'll go a little bit more and make that just be stronger. Maybe almost like a dry brush look and just let it be a little bit. 
kind of strong. I like this color, it's not super chalky on there. Okay. All right, we're gonna go into the quinacridone violet and we're going to float on the little hearts. I'm just gonna do it in the little corners and just to deepen them up a little bit. Whoops, I have way too much water. You don't wanna float it all over the top of them because then they'll end up being purple hearts and not red hearts. So if we just deepen the corners, then it'll have just like a depth but won't be changing their colors. Okay, so we'll load our brush. We're gonna have to do some walking on our floating up here. And blend. And then we'll come over here and we'll always start next to the edge and blend. And then you start walking it out and you're gonna need a big old darn mop. Actually, what I'm gonna do is show you a trick. Okay, so we will do a mop and get that off of there. Oh, I lost my mop. So in order to mop it, we're gonna go from the clean side in and just even that out, but we're gonna use a different technique. I think that'll work better. So we'll go ahead and get the edges. Sorry about this wobbliness. This is a hard project to film. So we'll get our edges done. And mop it out with your finger. And then I'll show you the trick. Okay, so we're gonna put some greenery coming out from underneath his hat. So we'll just do it kind of like the eyelashes. And then I like to do greenery um, in clumps. Like I'll do like three, or probably a little bit more than three in this case because it's so big. I could probably switch to a bigger brush too, but we'll see how this works. I'm gonna do it just a little bit bigger than you normally think you would so that it shows up on the size of a, of a slab of wood here. So I don't like to do them like eyelashes all the way down in a row and a row and a row. I like to have them be in little like evergreen tree clumps, if that makes sense. And we get down to our tip, then we splay it out there. And since we have a hat brim coming here, we can just go ahead and paint as if it's extending out of the hat brim area. And then we'll come up with just a little bit more coming out over here. Those can overlap. Okay, and then we'll add some over here and a little bit on his forehead. All right, the cute idea or the clever idea for extending that red is you take it and you do dry rubbing, just like as if you were gonna stencil or do something like that, and then you're going to rub it on the floated area and then draw it out. My brush is a little bit floppy. And that will extend that in without having to do all kinds of floating shenanigans. in and we're getting on the downhill slide here. All right I'm going to use um, the immediate acrylic sap green and we're going to float underneath the greenery just to kind of anchor it in. We might even just go ahead and float down and along it just to give it a little bit more body. I don't want to make this be too distracting, so I don't want to give it too much detail. Sorry. Okay, so I'll come down here. Let's get a little bit more 
stuff under here. We might even just indicate that there might be some more creeping out. It's a little bit softer. Okay, then we're going to repeat with what color are you? Viridian green. And that'll deepen that up a little bit. And we're not going to do that everywhere. We're just going to do that just a little bit right. Anchor it at the top just to deepen. That's good. All right, we're going to try the ocean blue for our words. And we'll get that kind of centered where we want. We want to leave room for the scarf. I'm going to draw that down just a teeny bit, make sure we're kind of even. I thought about like tilting it, but I think I want this to be able to be red well. And I think straight will make that be more of a likelihood. Okay, and then we're just going to scumble it, and I want to take a peek. Do I like the color or do I not like the color? I can't decide. We're going to scumble some more. Nice thing is if you do just a little soft scumble, you can change the color of this, and it marks your spot so you can lay the stencil back on top. Mesh, 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 mesh. Once again, any dust that you um, get under there can be brushed off. Okay, I'm going to take this off and take a look at it a little bit from a distance. Sure, so I'm gonna to have to think about this for a little bit. All right, I want to put my glitter on with a little bit of attitude. So I'm gonna put, I've got the um, glitter mix, the multi crystal glitter mix, and then the dimensional effects. And so what I'm doing is I'm gonna make a textury kind of effect on top of the snowflake with just a soft stipple, and that's gonna make these look a lot more um, crystallizey. When we do that, we'll do this over our glitter tray so that we don't make a mess and we can pour the glitter back into um, the bag. And then that looks, besides the fact that my little hairs are back there, um, you can't see it here, but it looks really good. And it looks way more um, chunky than um, without. 